I'm Miriam Kumpes, the director of the Center for Day School Education in Los Angeles at the Builders of Jewish Education, which is our central agency. And the central agency in LA has been working with and focused on assisting the 39 day schools that are in our community to address the very critical issue of day school affordability facing our community. We see day school education as being essential to creating the future of our community and are very concerned that because of the incredibly rapidly rising costs of Jewish education and Jewish cost of living in general in LA, that vast groups within the community are being priced out and therefore it's becoming only an opportunity for the most elite in some cases. In other cases, some of our schools have been really phenomenal at increasing financial aid. The steepest increase, interestingly enough, has been in the non-Orthodox schools, where financial aid has increased from something around 18% across the board as a percentage of total budget to closer to 38 to 40% system-wide. So that's been a very significant effort, especially since the downturn in the economy in 2008. Our Orthodox schools have always historically given more in financial aid, They're closer to the 58 to 60 percentile, so while they've increased a little bit, the increase has not been as dramatic as in the non-Orthodox schools. However, we really have felt very strongly that the long-term solution, the, the real solution, lasting solution regarding affordability is really in the area of endowment development. And we've been very, very fortunate to have a lead gift from the Liner family to create the, a community day school endowment fund, and then to receive two very significant grants, one from the Jim Joseph Foundation, and one from Avichai, first from Jim Joseph to work with five high schools, and then from Avichai through Peach to work with seven elementary schools. So in the last three years when the Jim Joseph grant started, we began working with the high schools to really help them build the infrastructure to go out and raise endowments. And at the end of the third year, which is about where we are now, they have met all of their benchmarks. So so we are still monitoring where that is in terms of endowment development, but really uh, are very optimistic about how that's moving along. Interestingly enough, in order to begin the high school's thinking about endowment development, it really had to create a tremendous shift in the culture in LA. And our schools really, in many ways, were, were not so open to the idea of building endowment. And it's taken a lot of work and a lot of funding, and a lot of carrots, in order to get them to see the value of endowment and to begin being successful in that arena. So we started with the five high schools, and interestingly enough, because that program had been in, in effect for over a year, and the other schools were sitting in the periphery looking to see what was happening with the high schools, when we started the Avi High Peach Grant of Generations, we had more schools this time applying for the seven slots that we had. And so we were able to be a little more selective, and the care are nowhere near what they are for the five high schools and yet those schools have really jumped on the bandwagon and have as of last week had already raised over four million dollars in endowment funds. So in a three-year period the LA Jewish day school community between the central fund and the individual school funds has already raised over 21 million dollars in endowment commitments pledges and cash. But that's a long-term solution. I mean, I often say to schools, had you started building an endowment when you were first created, you'd be in a very, very different situation than you are today. And so we also realize that we have to look at shorter-term solutions. And the shorter-term solutions are in a variety of areas. One of the things we are able to do in bringing our schools together is really to look at cost-saving opportunities that 
don't in any way reduce the value of what is being provided to the students. On the contrary, can reduce the cost but increase the value. So again, we were very fortunate to get a grant from Avi High to create an IT consortium. There is a staff person at one of our day schools who is really sort of a brilliant uh, chief information officer and who had extra time on his hands. He was overcapacitated and in our conversations offered to work with a number of our schools and so through the Avi High grant we're now working with at least 10 day schools to do an assessment to be able to improve their infrastructure and really raise the level of their IT infrastructure while reducing costs. And our goal is a, a 10 to 15% reduction in costs. And we feel very positive that we will be able to do that. We've done other things like a legal consortium, an HR consortium. Uh, we represent schools in terms of federal funding, No Child Left Behind, and have been very fortunate to bring into the system over a million dollars a year for professional development and to assist kids that are falling behind academically. And then to bring schools together to really bring the kind of resources and professional development that no one school could afford to bring, but that raises the bar across the system without increasing the cost. We're also exploring other models, other whether it's blended learning, looking at, we've been working with a number of our high schools, really one of the outcomes of the schools collaborating together on the endowment building is that they're also now working together on other projects, one of which is an online Jewish academy, which is for kids who need more customized education, which is very expensive if you were to do one-on-one, -on -one, but by doing it online and across the system, you know, whether it's a chemistry class or a Judaica class, we're able to work across a number of schools and bring those resources. So I think that the, the major tips I would have for communities are one is that it really helps to have a central entity, whether it's a central agency or a federation, that can really work with the whole gamut of the community and can help change that culture together. And the key, as in anything, is leadership, not just leadership centrally, but then finding the, the leaders, the advocates at each institution, at each school. You know, it's very clear to me that our schools that have been the most successful are the schools where the head of school, the director of development, the school president, and a development cadre of lay people really understand the value of endowment and therefore can go out and talk to their peers and other leadership within the community to make that happen. And that is, um, I think, probably the number one factor. I think you need the infrastructure. I think within the school you have to have a development staff that has the time to really go out and build those long-term relationships. Endowment is really about long-term relationships. They're about major gift apps. And so you really need to have the ability to have dedicated staff that can nurture that process and work with the head of school and the lay people in order to make sure that that happens. I think the other thing from a communal perspective is that it's really important that we put aside our competitive ads. And yes, we compete for students, but the reality is that, you know, in LA, each one of our 39 schools really has a unique niche. And the more we can help them to really articulate and define their unique niche, the better chance we have of making sure that the right people go to that school, to each of those schools. There's, you know, our community is very diverse, and the needs of our community and of our students are very diverse. And what might be the best school for my kids may not be the best school for your kids. And so it's about really being able to articulate what that uniqueness is in each institution 
so that the right matches can be made and to all work together to raise the tide together and to work together because you can accomplish so much more working as a community and I am really supporting each other in this effort. We've had wonderful success in bringing development directors together, heads of school together, lay leaders together to really brainstorm, learn from each other in order to, to build this strategy. And the other piece that I think is also critical is that you really need to have the training. You know, it's great to have the infrastructure, but then how do you begin? How do you begin to address whatever it is? From a central perspective, it's really about listening to the needs of the schools and finding what those needs are so that we can provide support in those areas and then bringing teams from the schools together so that not only can they learn, but they can then go back to their community with coaching and really begin that implementation and not just come really excited from a conference and go, great, I just learned all this stuff, and then you go back to your day to day. You need to have someone who's gonna help you and you know really work with you to make sure that the learning gets integrated and adapted to your institution so that it's long lasting and really has impact.